I started out very early in music. My mother is a musician. She's also a school teacher. She, she, taught, she taught school where I was born in a little town in Mississippi. And uh, she taught there many years until she had to retire. She taught there when it was segregated. When it was, she taught there after it was integrated until, as I said, she had to retire. She was too old. And she lived until she was 97, so uh, those things, that's why I've been in music all of these years. Every, every member of my family, we are all musicians. My brother, my sister, and of course my mother. So we, you know, we've uh, been music in all my life. Legacy is very much a part of, of a, an overall theme that's a part of this new recording. We have uh, Gerald's most recent commission, uh, which is also a commission of a city, so he's done Monterey Moods, which is a tribute to the Monterey Jazz Festival and the community that supports it. He's done uh, Detroit, which is a commission for the 30th anniversary of the Detroit Jazz Festival. And this was a commission uh, by the city of Chicago uh, and the jazz community there for, for, uh, for, for him to do a work featuring Chicago. So that's what we have the opportunity to, uh, to document now. But Legacy is also a part of this album because it's a family affair. This is the first time we're gonna be featuring Gerald's son Anthony and his composition Vertigo and his grandson Eric and his composition September Sky. Um, there's a great deal of the tradition that Gerald brings to the idea of leading a large ensemble and, and some of the concepts he's developed over the years uh, as an arranger that appears in both his son's work and his grandson's work. So there's a great legacy there. And in the case of the grandson, in the case of Eric, Eric Eric's other grandfather is Johnny Otis. Uh, and there's a great blues tradition there. His father is, is the great guitarist, Shuggy Otis. So there's a tremendous amount of family legacy and tradition in the music. Um, the essence of my dad's music is, uh, is probably simplicity. It's a, it's, it's a direct kind of music, I think. It's, it's different from other people's music in the sense that it's not overwritten. It's like he doesn't have that approach to writing that he decides to put everything in that he needs to have in. He allows the music to be simple enough for something to happen, and he also uh, loves the spontaneity of improvisation, so I feel like the music always has a sense of spontaneity, some, something happening, some energy of something happening, which is different than the kind of composer who writes everybody's notes and kind of micromanages the piece. He's much more about directness and simplicity. I'd say to someone who'd never heard Gerald's music, it's about sound. It's about the sonic capability of a band. It has to do with instrumentation and expanding harmony and adding color where it could be very basic. But nothing Gerald does harmonically is basic. And it's really a wake-up call for your ears if you're not used to hearing this kind of harmony. And some people hear it and they say, the first time, it's almost like, whoa, what's that? But, you know, I've been to all over the country with my grandfather, and I've seen people come up to him and ask him, how do you get these harmonics, um, how do you get these sounds out of the band, and how do you make this chord, and what does eight-part harmony mean? And so when I see these people come up to him and ask him these questions, I know that there's really something to this, and that people really aren't sometimes aware of just what a, a large jazz ensemble can do in the modern era. I 
my music would be a little different from, from any bands. First of all, I, uh, years ago, I, I, I devised a theory of harmony. Most bands play th four part harmony. They get five, they have a natural five, you just put a ninth in, you got a blind, you got a natural ninth chord. But I got a theory of working with the, my three diminished chords. And I, I, all, I found a way that I can write a chord out. It can be like an F7 chord, which is, you can write an F7 chord with, you know, four notes. And it's F, F7 chord, it's good. But I can write an F7 chord and I can put four more notes with it. So when my brass hit down on that four, see, no matter how loud you play four part, it can't get any louder. No matter how high to put the trumpets to play it, it can't get, it can't get any more force. But when you put eight different notes in one chord, when you hit it down, man, even the people, they know that difference. They can hear that difference. And so my band was first passed to first band to do that. Um, Virgo is a piece that I wrote for my father's band um, about two years ago uh, during his 90th birth year uh, the Hollywood Bowl LA Philharmonic Association did a concert that honored uh, Gerald and Hank Jones on their 90th birth years so they commissioned me to write a, a piece that would be a tribute and uh, I just tried to write a piece that embodied some of those same principles, you know, while still being my own music. But, but I wanted it to be something that, would, that could be a vehicle for his band, that, that, uh, that was still simple and direct and rhythmic and, and swinging. I thought that was something very important. And I kind of, in terms of legacy or, or in terms of what it would mean to write something for him, for his band, to write something that embodied those that same kind of thing. So it's what I tried to do. And just also in that piece, I tried to tell a story, you know, really really give a beginning, a middle, and end, and, and have it move through something always building, which is uh, also something I think uh, that I learned from, from him. In, in all his best work, there's that sense of a storytelling and, and a building and a narrative that I think is important. My composition for the album Legacy is called September Sky and it's a song I started about 11 years ago when I was about 21. I had a basic melody and some chords and no orchestration. It was just a song I planned to do possibly in a guitar, bass, drums. I'm a guitarist also and one day I was cleaning up and I found the sheet music to this song I had written 11 years ago and it just it spoke to me and it told me you have to orchestrate this and so I went to my grandfather about it and I said you know how would you feel if I tried to orchestrate this song I started writing 11 years ago and he said you know go for it and it was kinda like a ha ha you know go try it out but then later a couple days later I recorded a rough version of it at home 
and I really wanted him to hear it. I really wanted him to see what it was I was working with. So I let him hear it. He put the earphones on and I knew when he started laughing and moving, I said, wow, he really likes this song. And he said, that's a great song. Gerald Wilson is the one artist and big band leader, uh, composer, arranger that we have whose career really spans the history of large ensemble music in America in modern time. It starts with Jimmy Lunsford, it continues with Duke Ellington, with Count Basie, with Ray Charles, with um, all the great divas, Ella Fitzgerald and Sarah Vaughan, uh, right on into today. So the concept of legacy presents itself in so many ways uh, in the process of making this record. Mm -hmm. 